When designing data flows, Azure SQL Data Warehouse is likely to be situated at the end of the line where ingested and processed data is stored so that it can be later analyzed. When processed data is ready for analysis, SQL Data Warehouse uses Polybase to query the big data stores where the processed data lives and uses standard T-SQL queries to pull the data into SQL Data Warehouse. This scaled out version of SQL Server focuses on providing enterprise data warehouse functionality by leveraging Massively Parallel Processing, or MPP. While it does provide SQL compatibility, Enterprise Data Warehouse doesn't do everything that SQL can do. For example, Azure SQL Data Warehouse doesn't support foreign key constraints. That said, it's not really meant to be used like SQL Server is. What SQL Data Warehouse does is store data into relational tables using columnar storage. Doing so vastly reduces the data storage costs while improving query performance. Data that is stored in SQL Data Warehouse can be analyzed at massive scale. When compared to other traditional database systems, SQL Data Warehouse analysis queries finish in seconds or minutes instead of hours or days. When designing a data warehouse with Azure SQL Data Warehouse, begin by loading data into a service such as Azure Data Lake Storage or Azure Blob Storage. From there, you'll want to use Polybase to load the data into a staging table in SQL Data Warehouse. Next, choose a table distribution strategy. You can configure distributed tables or replicated tables. A distributed table appears as a single table. However, its rows are actually stored across 60 different distributions, and they are distributed with a hash or round-robin algorithm. A replicated table, however, makes a full copy of the table accessible on each compute node, of which there can be as many as 60. By replicating a table, you remove the need to actually transfer data among the compute nodes prior to a join or aggregation. Replicated tables work best in cases where the table size is less than 2 gig compressed. Next, you'll need to index your table so it can be read quickly. You can leverage one of three types of indexing depending on your needs. The heap type of index is good for staging and temporary tables, as well as small tables with small lookups. A clustered index is better for tables with up to 100 million rows and for tables with more than 100 million rows, but with only one or two columns that are heavily used. A clustered column store index, or CCI, is best for large tables with more than 100 million rows. You might also want to partition a table when a large fact table is involved. A large fact table would be one with more than 1 billion rows. In almost all cases, the partition key should be based on date. It's important to note, however, that you do not over partition, especially in cases where you are using a clustered column store index. While it's not necessary, incrementally loading the data minimizes disruption to business users. If you do choose to incrementally load data, ensure that you allocate larger resource classes to loading your data. Microsoft recommends using Polybase and ADF v2 for automating ELT pipelines into SQL Data Warehouse. It's important to remember that if you know in advance what the primary operations and queries are going to be run in the data warehouse, you can build a design that prioritizes the data warehouse architecture for such operations.